Hi, YouTube land. <clears throat> this is Michael Zangara of the 20mm Sci-Fi, 20mm Wargaming Sci-Fi Channel Show. And uh, basically what we're going to do today is talk about Frostgrave and uh, getting started. And uh, this is a series of videos that I'm doing uh, about Frostgrave. Uh, please check out my other ones. This one today will be about what monster minis you'll need to do uh, the basic core rulebook scenarios. So basically, you're going to need, I'm going to just list off the monsters and uh, how many you'll need to do uh, random encounters and then how many uh, miniatures you'll need to do the scenarios. And I'm also going to talk about the terrain. So, you're going to need a skeleton. You're going to need three armored skeletons. Two zombies. Two ghouls. A bear. A boar. A giant rat. Uh, two ice spiders. Uh, for those spiders, you want to find something that's kind of hairy looking. A uh, snow leopard. A wild dog. Uh, you're going to need three wild dogs, actually. Um, two wolves. A small construct. Now, if the construct, basically, what you're looking for is something that you can paint up as a golem or find some kind of golem miniature. There is tons out there. Uh, you'll need an imp. Two ice toads. And actually... Uh, I found two really great miniatures for ice toads. It comes in a set. Uh, you you can get those uh, ice toads from Reaper Miniatures. You're going to need uh, six race, a white gorilla, a medium construct, a minor demon, two snow trolls, uh, some kind of giant worm. You might need up to three of those. A werewolf, a vampire, a large construct, and a genie. Alright, so. Uh, the skeletons, armored skeletons, zombies, and ghouls. North Star does make a undead encounter set. As you can see a review on uh, YouTube. And, uh. That would be probably a good buy if you don't have these miniatures. Uh, the bears are pretty easy to find. The boars are pretty easy to find. Giant rats, ice spiders, wild dogs, and wolves. I would go to, if you're going to do this on the cheap, I would go to a couple of uh, uh, resale shops and see what they have in the kids' toy section. Maybe you can find small plastic uh, miniatures that will, well, little toys that will work as miniatures. Um, the snow leopard, I or you could go to a dollar store too and find something that's probably usable. Just be patient. Uh, snow leopard's going to be tough, but they do make one for North Star miniatures. I'm actually proxying a lion miniature I had from my gladiator set. And I painted it uh, kind of like a, an albino type looking lion, so it'll be a snow lion. Um, the imps are pretty easy to find. Uh, they're pretty nondescript on that. Uh, race are easy to find pretty much anywhere. Uh, the white gorilla, that's another thing that you might be able to find at a resale shop. Um, demons are pretty a dime a dozen. Snow trolls you probably have to get from uh, either North Star or Reaper or any other company that has something that's got kind of a furry looking troll. Uh, the giant worms, uh, cheapest option I saw was Reaper. Uh, werewolf miniatures are pretty easy to find. Vampires are pretty easy to find. Uh, Genie's going to be a little bit tougher. You're probably going to have to go to Reaper for that. Now, as far as uh, terrain that you'll need to either make 
or uh, buy. You're going to need one building for the mausoleum. Um, you're going to need to make a token for uh, with the genie lamp on it. Uh, you're going to need to buy one 10 inch tower with two uh, with three levels, basically. Uh, this is something I would probably make. And then that scenario also requires two smaller buildings that are close to the tower. And you'll want to create some kind of walkway. Uh, the best way to do a walkway is to use uh, bamboo skewers, uh, balsa wood, or uh, popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks is probably the easiest way. Uh, and, and just buy some balsa wood or... Uh, you know, if you don't care what the bottom of it looks like, you can glue spruce to it. Uh, it's a cheap way to do it. Um, basically, you're going to have to make a uh, kind of like one of those cardboard tiles that you see, uh, like GM Scotty make. And you need to make like a library size building and then put scattered terrain in it. You're going to have to... Uh, Make little walls where the books are. Um, you're going to need to make uh, six medium-sized statues with little bases. Six stone huts. A well. Uh, four teleporter discs. Uh, basically, just cut out some uh, cardboard, paint it up, make it look uh, like a little summoner's type thing. And you're going to need six medium-sized ruined columns. So basically with um, that terrain made, you'll be able to do any of the uh, scenarios in the core book. And with the with that list of monsters, you'll be able to do uh, uh, any of the random encounters. Uh, you do have the capability of taking miniatures that you do have. And uh, making just a random uh, monster uh, uh, chart. Just, you know, check out the book and work with what you got. You know, if you got uh, old D&D &D books and you don't remember how powerful a monster is, kind of gauge it with that. And then uh, create your own uh, random wandering monster table. Um, a lot of the reports that I've seen far as battle reports and these have been done by really good people and don't get me wrong I mean I enjoy them but uh you know they just take a zombie and throw it in the game or whatever that really takes away from the flavor of the game because sometimes uh you'll roll up a really tough monster to kill and that really changes how a game will go and it adds excitement and stuff like that. And sometimes it's, you know, go and kill that monster. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, let's get the heck out of there and uh, take what treasure you can and get the heck out of there. So, um, the more powerful the monster is, the more likely uh, as the game re referee, I'm going uh, to be able to, uh, you know, if it's a tough monster with over 12 uh, hits or 14 hits or even more than that give some XP for that you know 10 20 30 uh, XP points make it worth the while the characters at least try attack it um, and you know you can always do a morale type thing too where if a monster falls below a certain amount of hit points it's gonna run away uh, you know, for semi-intelligent animals, like, a, a, like if you were to do a saber-toothed tiger, for example, um, you know, if it was down to, you know, five or less, uh, points and it could run away, uh, a predator is gonna run away. So, you know, this is, you know, a war game, but it also has aspects of role-playing, so, uh, don't be afraid to, uh, Take what you have for miniatures and use them and proxy them and uh, you know find like like uh, creatures that are the same kind of power level and design them like that. Uh, all these things add enjoyment to the hobby and should be done. And uh, 
add some creativity. That way, uh, you get a lot more playability out of this. And, uh, I think that's a, a good thing that people forget. Just because it's, an, uh, not written in the book, there's a lot of instances in the book where it says, you know, you've got room to design your own thing. You know, you're not playing competitive Warhammer, competitive, uh, Hordes or competitive, uh, you know, just these, uh, bold action or whatever. You know, this is your game. Have fun with it. All right, so, um, if anybody's got any questions, please leave comments. Please check out my other videos and like and subscribe. And I appreciate you all watching and may the dice be with you.